It's episode 19 of Gamify 24-7. We are back once again and we are in our usual spots, although we are one light this week because somebody's decided that they have more important things to do, like go off on holiday to Florida. Oh, it's all right for some. Welcome along to Gamify 24-7. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so Kat's away this week and shes I've seen some of the pictures. It looks like she's having a ball. I am not jealous in any way whatsoever of her holiday to Florida and I hope she hears this and realises how jealous we all are. Yeah, I know. Be jealous, Kat, be jealous. <laughs> it looks like she's having a great time and uh, we've uh, we've not got long now till, till E3 so um, I guess today we are probably going to touch on that because, you know, we're getting to the stage now where it's, you know... It got we're real. Starting, yeah, we're starting to get leaks and everything yeah. now. We're starting to get early announcements. Pokemon, well, uh, we'll go into that, but directs yeah. tomorrow and I know, news. I know. All the rumours are coming. Yeah. Out. It's exciting times indeed. <laughs> By the way, this is us. We're almost on. We're almost in our 20s. I know. God, it's flew back. Just, just like me, almost in my 20s. Now, <laughs> um, before we start, what I thought we could do, because we haven't done this in a while, is um, just for those that are switching on the podcast for the first time, there are four of us. There's Kat, who's currently away. Uh, I'm Mike. Uh, you guys are? I, I'm Anton. Um, yes, <laughs> I do stuff occasionally on the internet. <laughs> I'm also joined by... <laughs> Sean Paul Johnston. You guys know me. I'm always on blabbing away and do my daily fix and everything, so you'll see me on there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And um, it's something that we forget to do because because we talk away every week and we all know each other and the, and the regular listeners know us now. Um, I sometimes forget that there will be people listening for the first time. So hello, if you are a first time listener, you can get in touch with us. In fact, do that. I would love to hear from you. Uh, Twitter, you can do uh, hashtag Gamify247. And there's there's uh, what we really like is pictures of dogs and cats yep. and things. Team dogs. Um, I like how this has like become a, a regular feature now. I love yeah, how it corrupted the show. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And um, Sean, what about uh, how people can get in touch elsewhere and how can they listen to the podcast other than the way they're listening to it right now? Well, <laughs> well exactly. The best way to listen to it is on YouTube. If you go to the YouTube channel dot com, so YouTube dot com forward slash small fry unify. And we've got a whole playlist for the podcast. You can go listen to all the previous ones. But every time we, the podcast goes up live, it'll be there featured on the page and you can check out there. I was posting the podcast, by the way, I just realised this last night, which is quite frustrating. I was posting the podcasts on Facebook to the, the groups, the various groups, like the Nintendo Switch group, the Xbox group and the PlayStation. And what yes. I found out is at least one of them, and I presume it's happened to more, was if I shared it from the Facebook page, the Small Fry Unified page, it wasn't getting posted, it was getting deleted. Because they won't oh, allow right. you to share... A page you have to do it directly in the group so ah. going forward apologies if you missed them i kept on saying go and check it go and check it some of these guys have probably missed them on the facebook stuff so right. we'll be posting directly now so hopefully it makes a bit of a difference cool yeah that makes sense so i guess you you, you do like um a link to the the youtube page or the yeah. soundcloud or whatever yeah got you okay so um this is episode 19 so as you said we're almost into double figures and it's it's interesting that we're going to hit that number 20 right at E3 kind of time, mm. which is mm-hmm. kind of cool. So um, let's talk a little bit about what's been happening this week. First of all, Nintendo Switch now, um, there has been developments with headsets. Tell us a bit about this, because does this mean that we might be having the potential of chat uh, or are we going to have individual groups? How's it going to work? What's the plan, Anton? Do you know? Um, so from what I can tell, we're going to have a new app where we can manage all of our Nintendo Switch features in terms of online gaming, which I presume they'll be trailing that over the summer with Splatoon 2. Um, essentially, to do any form of multiplayer, rather than having a big bulky headset or anything like that, you just plug in your normal headphones that have a microphone into them right into your iPhone or Android device, and then all of a sudden you've got voice chat and you can do groups, which is nice, I guess, <laughs> for people who are social, whatever that means. And right. yeah, you can chat so, games. Social butterflies. Yeah. Okay, so, so this is this is like an, an app in your phone. You your headphones for your phone as normal. Is that how it works? Is that do we need anything else or? Well, this is the thing. The Splatoon two thing that mm-hmm. came out. I'm actually a little bit worried about this. If Nintendo's made a silly error with like a most basic of concept. 
the Splatoon 2 headset looked cool, really, really cool. I've actually done a daily feature thing on it. Uh, but they've got it so it's got a little, what looks like a squid adapter, and you plug your phone into that, and then you plug your switch into it, and then right. the cable goes to the headset. And to me, that is ridiculous. Now, most people, I think, who have got a switch are really predominantly using it as a handheld. Mm -hmm. I think Nintendo knew this anyway. It's just that it has got the, obviously, the docked feature, which works really well. But most people are going to be using this as a portable device. So having a mobile hanging off it and the headset hanging off seems ridiculous mm -hmm. and so out of date for the current sort of state of things. Uh, sorry, Michael, yeah? Well, I was going to say, see, I, I would like to see a poll on who is using the Switch as a handheld and who's using it as a docked mm. in general. Because I started off using it as a handheld and now I'm predominantly playing it docked. Really? Uh, which is interesting, yeah, and yeah. and I think a lot of that is to do with Mario Kart because I tend to play online two player with Rachel, and I think that that is where that comes from. Um, I'm not utilizing the handheld side of it as much, although I, when I'm away, I'm going away shortly to uh, on a couple of trips, and for sure I'll be doing it then. Mm. But I haven't actually been using it as much handheld um, as I was to begin with, so I'll be interested to see. And I, I, for me, yeah, I think you're right. I think if you're sitting up, if you're sitting in front of the telly, it's not such an issue. But if you're sitting, you know, portable with wires hanging out everywhere, then that's a problem. Well, well, that's the thing. Even in dog mode, it's even more of an issue because okay. now, if you've got it in dog mode, how are you going to plug in a headset? It doesn't go through the controller, yep. so the controller's got no like. Uh, adapted there for headphones so now you're either going to have to run a cable from your dock oh, yeah. to your headphones yeah, or what, what would have been the perfect solution there's bluetooth 4 in the switch itself why is that not available for bluetooth headsets at least that would have been an option and a solution uh, mm. but yeah i think we should definitely put up a poll i'll when i post this up on facebook and the youtube channel I'll put up a poll on the Switch Nintendo Switch group on Facebook and we'll yep. put that there and we can see what people mm -hmm. say and what people come I'd back to. I'd be interested. That. I'd be interested. But yeah, I, 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 like, I genuinely think like if, if they've not got a better solution, if they don't implement Bluetooth 4 or Bluetooth in some way, if that is the solution, connected up wires, they've made a massive error because that's just the most <laughs> simple, basic thing you can imagine. Now, mm -hmm. it could be that that's just for the Splatoon headset as a temporary measure and if you go through your mobile phone, you just plug your headset into your phone or you can Bluetooth mm -hmm. from your phone. Mm -hmm. That would be all right. But it's just the fact that they've made that little daft sort of set up there. It's yeah. making me think that they've dropped the ball in it. Yeah, I think Nintendo's clumsy. made the oversight in thinking that people, when, they've, when they're when they chatting with their friends, they don't want to hear the game. Mm -hmm. And that's why they've got this convoluted system right now. Because yeah. you can just plug in directly into your phone and get direct tra chat audio, but you won't get the TV audio. Yeah. Or you can plug mm -hmm. directly in the Switch and get straight audio. Yeah. But otherwise, you're kind of boned, what's quite unfortunate. I, I actually came up with an idea when we were doing like games in Series 2. One of the things I was saying, me and Kat and Lindsay were talking about it on one of the episodes, or a couple of episodes. I was saying the perfect solution was, the rumour, was that you could hook up your your iPhone or your mobile device and you could have it so it would show your messages on the Switch screen. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that's like to me, that actually sounded like a good solution. People were complaining about it, that you had that you had to use a mobile. But I thought if they implemented that, where it was like a Bluetooth connection and you could get your messages and all that kind of stuff, your internet and everything, going through your Switch like that wirelessly, it'd be mm -hmm. great. And then, like I said, if you could have your, your audio coming from your phone syncing through to it, that's a perfect solution. And it could be they've got something like that, but like I said, it just looks like the clumsy mess they've got with a Splatoon 2 one. It makes me think of if they're doing that and they've got a solution, why not just hold off and show a Splatoon 2 closer to launch, show a, head show a headset that's using that proper setup. So it makes me think that they've not got a proper setup, they've screwed right. it up. See, the thing I, I really do not get this setup, the now because it's like, oh, I'm going to have to go ahead and get this big setup. Why am I going to and use use a uh, voice chat on my phone if i was going to do that why wouldn't i use skype and that mm. way i can chat to friends who don't have yeah um an nintendo switch who have a pc or have an xbox mm. it's like they've just added a convoluted gap and mm. it's like what's the point in this app existing yeah when they, mu they must have something they've got to have something that we're totally oblivious mm -hmm. to it we're in the dark about and they're going to show it off at e3 they must have something because the online aspect, obviously we got information this week, a couple of days ago, about the online service and what features when it's delayed now until 2018, unfortunately. But it makes me think, <laughs> have they got something that's really unique and cool and that's why they're delaying? 
Or is it just a total mess? <laughs> mm. But Nintendo's known for making stupid mistakes like this. Yeah, I mean, after not making a stupid mistake with the Switch as well, it would be a shame to, to then ruin it yeah. with silly decisions. But, hey, well, we'll see. I mean, I guess that this is due to come out around about the release time of Splatoon, so what, July kind of time? Is that what they're looking at for this? Uh, no, I think it's... No, that comes out in July, yeah. Yes. I think summertime. Yes. Yeah, it's mm. general just summer holiday time. Yeah. Right. OK, well, we'll keep an eye on that and see what um, what happens with the development of the headset. It's an interesting one. I think it, for Splatoon, it could be a, a real make or break as well, because it could really add a whole new layer to the to the game if they do it well, you know, mm -hmm. it really make a difference. All right. So um, I've got a note here about Nintendo fighting Apple for parts. What's that all about, guys? Yeah. So essentially, as you know, everybody's well, as everybody knows, Apple is not doing good with keeping up with... Not Apple. Oh my god, I can't speak today. Nintendo <laughs> isn't doing good with keeping up with parts and supply, and they're in sh such short sort shortage, people are buying games without even owning the console yet. And apparently the problem is, is the SD RAM that the Nintendo Switch uses is Apple's using that in their next iPhone. Mm -hmm. So Apple's busy gearing away for the launch of the next iPhone, and obviously much deeper pockets with... I think it's 30 billion that got stashed away and they're just hoarding and mm. spending much more money getting all these parts that the N Nintendo's needing. Yeah, I think like, like obviously as you say, Apple's obviously for the last 10 years with their iPhones and iPads, they're well known for like, they are the dominant uh, like receiver from the suppliers mm -hmm. like Foxconn and getting the stuff made. So I think uh, Apple is the big priority here. And I think no matter whatever company comes up, even if it's something like Samsung that competes on a on a mobile phone level, you know, Apple just gets the first pick of the pick of the components. So yeah, that's probably what's been causing the delay by getting more stock out. Or it could just be a manufacturer's delay, who knows? <laughs> as well as that, um, in terms of they're built in the same factories in Foxconn. So it's mm. like the relationship that Apple has with Foxconn is a much more valuable relationship for them and like Apple's a much bigger client mm -hmm. that they need to look after and make sure Apple stays with them because yeah. Foxconn would be nothing without yeah. Apple so they really need to keep that relationship alive so if Nintendo had to get thrown out the side I'm pretty sure they would do it obviously yeah. they're not going to go to that extreme I, th I think there was talk though wasn't there that Nintendo's possibly looking at another supplier for the RAM or something it's one of the competitors, it's TMSC or whatever they're called, I forgot the name of them, but one of those companies might be able to fulfil the extra demand. We'll see what happens with that. But yeah, they need to, obviously it's selling like hotcakes, it's still sold out. One of the stories I've seen just to kind of relate to this was mm. in Japan, it looks like they're having lotteries for who gets a Nintendo Switch. They're still wow. queuing out outside the shops waiting for the Switch to come into stock and they're going around and giving people tickets and it's a lottery now. <laughs> so it's like, you might get one, you might not. That's like incredible demand. It but is, yeah. If if they can't kind of fill that stock up, then you know, that's a nightmare because we've got E3. What happens if Sony, the rumour of this handheld from mm -hmm. Sony, if that does materialise into something that's real, you know, they're going to already get a dent hit just from that, even as popular as it is now. If Sony comes up with something that's a handheld that has got the audio fix, yeah. has got their online sort of doubt, has got all the support, you know, that's going to affect its sales when it, it could have done way better if it had all the stock there. Yeah, it's absolutely insane with, in terms of the sales because apparently, according to the CEO of GameSpot, yeah. or Stop, sorry. GameStop, yeah. Um, they're actually selling out all their Nintendo Switches before they make them to store. Like, they get them into the warehouse, they go up on the website and they're gone before they <laughs> even get shipped out. Yeah, And, wow. yeah, it's just insane. But on the bright side of this whole thing, even with Nintendo making the maximum amount of Nintendo Switches that they can, they're still making 20 million this year. Yeah, they've extended well, Compare that, that to the, what the Wii U did in like four years, mm -hmm. where Nintendo's still in a pretty decent position. If, if Nintendo could get even 10 million sold this year, you mm. know what I mean? That's almost catching up to the Wii U already. Mm -hmm. But if they can get 10 million out, that, that'll be an impressive sales. If, if they can get 20 or 18 million or whatever's been yeah. rumoured, if they could do that, oh my God, that, that's it. It's... Remember I said to you guys, I'm going to come back to this in a, in, a, in a year or two time. I said, I think it's got the potential to sell as much as the Wii. And well, I thought, yeah. Well, it leads me nicely on to the next topic, which is tomorrow's Pokemon-themed Nintendo yeah. Direct oh. presentation. Because you talk, I talk about them trying to sell big numbers. What would sell bigger numbers than a brand Nobody new Pokemon game in the Switch? You know yep. what I mean? 
So this, so this happened last year. They did this this similar kind of thing in February last year, and that was to announce the uh, Sun and Moon Games yep. and the mm-hmm. 20th anniversary. So that was a big thing. They're going to want to follow that up, having done that, with something that is equally memorable. So are we going to see Pokemon Stars on the Switch? Well... Uh, uh, you know what? It's been rumoured by, again, I keep coming back to the same people I credit to, Laura Kate Dale especially, mm-hmm. and they've been harping on about Pokemon Stars. There was supposedly leaked art that they'd showed that when it was during, well, not leaked art, sorry, it was the artwork that they showed during the Pokemon Sun and Moon where it looked like 3D models that were really nicely done. And people were like, maybe that's Pokemon Stars, and they've been mm-hmm. working on it at the same time. Uh, one of the guys, I'm just getting his name here, if I can get it right, Junichi Masuda, He's one of the guys that's uh, the big shot at the Pokemon company. And whenever he tweets, it's normally because there's something major happening. So, right. you know, I think we're all expecting Pokemon Stars. We're all hoping for uh, like a Pokemon Stars. Yeah. Even if it's a game that's a cross-platform or it's a dual release on the 3DS and the Switch, that's going to be massive for Switch. And I think going into E3 with the Scorpio on the horizon, VR stuff... There's a potential new PlayStation 4, the gold one. Yeah. It's obviously just a redo, but uh, well, yeah. but all that stuff in the horizon and whatever else we might see. Coming into E3, before E3, with a Pokemon Stars. Yep. Wow. <laughs> That's a big yeah. one, like. And there's a lot to support that, because Nint- um, the Pokemon company has been like announcing a few new Pokemon games recently. So it isn't like <laughs> Yep, Magic Harp, and we've got that Pokemon. Other one. Yep. Yeah. So it isn't like They've obviously got something big to show if they're getting rid of like clearing out these announcements. True, and now, true, yeah. And as you were saying, the in Pokemon Sun and Moon, it's filled with like high res 1080p uh, polygons and graphics and stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, not graphics, but you get what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Assets. Assets. So true. it Assets. totally makes sense that they're gearing up for something big. What? Well, it's this really lends a lot of excitement towards the Switch because if you remember the 3DS, the 3DS didn't have a good launch and it was really struggling until Mm. we got these big heavy hitters like Animal Crossing and Pokemon. Yeah, I think that's the thing that that we are all hoping for, the big hitters to to appear. And this would certainly kickstart that if we have that announcement tomorrow. Uh, It'll be interesting and it's interesting timing as well, obviously, just with it being so close to E3, it could really, as you say, Sean, it could set it up beautifully. And uh, you mentioned briefly the gold PlayStation 4. Now, this is going to be apparently on sale just for a week or just eight days, um, apparently. At one terabyte hard drive, PS4, gold-hued. It looks... <laughs> I love it. I want, I want one. <laughs> <laughs> I never actually like looked too much into the details. I just saw it flashing up like earlier yeah. today. But yeah, a golden $250, I think it is. Yeah. And yeah, like that's going to be... Well, there was someone had shown an image. It was a photo on Reddit. And okay. apparently it's a leaked image from one of the store promotions. So yeah, it's like I'm trying to think who the promotion was from. It's and sorry. and gadget UK were doing a, uh, were doing like their own thing, but I don't know if that was just the uh, reveal on it or if that was the right. you know, they were actually doing well, it. Well, the, the picture I've got here, yeah, you say one terabyte limited edition console with controller. Yeah, so two hundred ninety nine dollars. Well, it says re- regular price two hundred ninety nine dollars. Save fifty dollars to get for two hundred fifty dollars. But yeah, I was thinking, does does that mean at E three? Sony's not really got any big major announcements for hardware, which, you know, mm. they shouldn't because they've got the PlayStation 4 Pro and they've got the VR. So, and I think we got told there's not going to be any updates to VR for PlayStation VR mm. for at least another year or two. Personally, so, yeah. I don't I don't think I want Sony to announce a new some new hardware. I, I would be quite happy if they were to talk about developing what they're already already doing really well. Um, VR, I'd like to see some more from VR. I'd like to see it become... Agree. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to see it become um, more accessible somehow as well. And I don't mean that it's not accessible when you get it. It's getting people to want to get it. And I think that they really... I, I would love them to see them to see them push that. But mm. also with the PlayStation 4, I mean, we already had the, the, the Pro, the update, uh, what, six months ago or whatever it was. And, and for me, I would love them to to really say, you know what, we're, we're confident with where we are right now. And show, mm-hmm. to me, that would show real strength to say... Actually, we don't. We're not talking about hardware right now. That's Xbox. Leave them to do what they're doing. Mm-hmm. We're gonna. Yeah. We're gonna focus on what we're good at, and we're gonna bring out the best games that any console has this year. And that would me. That to me would be real competition for the Switch. That's how I would yeah. love them to go. Well, well, that's the thing, isn't it? That's sorry, Anton. Oh, uh, that's the mark. PlayStation <laughs> Four. That's at six, sixty million sales now. The PlayStation Four Pro. 
I, I think it, they said one in five of their sales is a PlayStation 4 Pro. So it's like it's doing extremely well. Then they've got the VR, and as you say, I think 100% agree, if they're focused on those consoles now, instead of fragmenting it again or trying to compete on even more tech spec, there's, <laughs> there's no real need for it. I think focus on the games, that's what they're doing really well with. Mm -hmm. They've sold those, it's going to continue on. The only thing that I'm, in some ways, I'd be excited and I'd be a little bit worried for Nintendo in some sense is there was a picture someone had done like a mock up. I don't know if this is like official things or just someone messing around, but someone had showed off what looked like a kind of uh, competitor to the Nintendo Switch, a handheld yeah. where the two like controllers came off the side, kind of like a Switch, but a little bit different, looked more like Joy Con, eh, not Joy Cons, but the, I forgot what you call them, the motion controllers from the Nintendo Wii U. The oh, Wii. none. Nunchucks. Nunchucks. Yeah, look yeah. like nunchucks with the buttons. And, you know, look like a really slick sort of design and stuff. So I've, I've got an idea on that too, because I, for me, uh, if they're going to do that, what I want them to do is make it PS4 compatible. Make it so that what you've got on the PlayStation 4, it's a different option for you. And mm. it gives you the handheld experience if you want it, but you can dock it like you can a Switch. If you did something like that and it didn't, it wasn't yet another console. Mm but something that was different about what they're already doing, I might be interested. What I worry about is that if they if they decide that, actually, look what the Switch are doing, let's go and do that, it takes the focus again away from, from, from the PS4 and, and the Pro, which is still new. Mm. You know, it's it's not it's not old by any means. But it's um, money, though, Michael. It's money. I know, this is irrelevant. I know, it's I money. It is irrelevant. <laughs> I find it incredible how it's like Nintendo was being a joke for years, and then mm. all of a sudden... Oh, you know, Sony might be working on a new console. Microsoft, they've been nosing up the Switch recently, if any of you have heard of their yeah. new um, the survey, question, survey. And yeah. they're like, every second question, they're like, yeah, what is your favourite Xbox game? Question two. Well, tell us about the Nintendo Switch. Would you buy one? <laughs> What's funny is this episode is pretty much just a Nintendo episode. But yeah, that, that survey, there was two things came out for that. They were asking about the Switch, and it's like, well, maybe, maybe Microsoft's ready to jump in with their own portable mm -hmm. and do something that's similar to a Surface tablet and have it even better. And if they do that, you know, they're obviously pushing the hardware boundaries mm -hmm. now, so it could be pretty impressive. It, yeah. if, if it is synchronous with their main console, yeah. like a PlayStation 4 when you're saying, I think if they start putting in, like, something where it's got big stupid, like, proprietary CD, like, my, uh, mini SDs or whatever, <laughs> I don't know, but yeah. stuff like that, then it's just going to fragment it again. But one of the other things that came out of that survey was... It's almost confirmed in some way that there's going to be a, a SNES Mini. Yeah. A SNES yes. Classic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there is. That looks like that it's happening. And I think yeah. that's going to be... Um, it would not surprise me if, if it, in very similar way to the NES Mini, it becomes a collector's item very, very quickly. I still don't think that they're going to... Um, they're going to have enough stock to please everyone because, and I think it'll be a de deliberate ploy, and I think it's going to happen again, and you're going to see them on eBay for silly money within about a week. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try and buy one this time. I'm not going to fall for that mistake again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll be doing <laughs> Here's some weird, interesting theory. What if they made the PSVR standard part of the PlayStation experience? So when you go out there, you can go out there and buy a PS4 that's got a PlayStation VR bundled in there, and you're just buying this complete set. Mm -hmm. So it isn't like so that's one thing I've been thinking about recently is how if you want to go into PlayStation VR as like somebody who doesn't own a PlayStation, you're like, OK, so I've got two different PlayStations to choose from, almost three if you consider the original variant. I need to get camera separately. I need to get two different controllers separately. I need yeah. to get a headset separately. Then I need to make sure I buy the right game. So I'm wondering, mm -hmm. what if they streamlined the system so they're getting VR, like people can just go out and be like, I want a VR box. Well, I think like the fact that they said they're go not going to do anything for the next year or two, I don't think we're going to see, unfortunately, we're not going to see anything like that. Microsoft might do something like this, but mm. this may be Microsoft's ploy. But yeah, I'd, I'd mm. love the PlayStation or the Xbox, Scorpio, or whatever you might call mm -hmm. it. Uh, I'd love one of those guys to come out. I'd love Nintendo to do something similar as well. But I'd love, especially as a PlayStation 4 Pro owner that's got the VR and all the stupid cables with the extra box. And I yeah. said this at the time when, when, when I did the unboxing, why they never put that in the PlayStation 4 Pro oh, as yeah. part of a self-contained unit was ridiculous. But what I'd love PlayStation to do, or Sony to do, is if they brought out, let's say, a brand new PlayStation 4, as in it was the same specs, that box was built into it and the headset was wireless now. Yeah. That, and, oh. I, and, it, and it was inside-out tracking, so you don't need a camera, it does the inside-out tracking that's the big thing now where you don't need to put cameras and stuff and sensors. It tracks where you are in the environment. So you have a, a wireless inside-out headset and the console, and it's just 
Two separate bits, no cables running all over the place, no wires and tether in it. That would sell gamma. Especially if they came out and said, you know, it's £700 roughly for a PlayStation 4 Pro and a PlayStation VR. You're talking about 700 quid for the two of them together. If they came out and said, £400 and you got that, wow. That, no, that mm. would compete with a Scorpio on a tech level. And you wouldn't have to be providing a brand new console. You're just tweaking it with some extra options and it's built in and cleaned up a little bit more. I would be interested in that. I, I must admit. You'd be all if, over if, the mic. <laughs> <laughs> we finally get you in Star Trek. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, I'd be there. Yeah, no, I'd be, I'd be completely uh, all over it. I mean, the thing is that the, again, it's that integration thing. It's that having a million different cables to to power one thing. And for me, the whole, um, the, the whole extra. Um, effort and purchase price and the, it, it's like a, I think that's what puts a lot of people off I really do I mean I kind of sit in the middle because I have an interest obviously in it anyway but I think for mm. people that are buying for the first time or looking to upgrade their PlayStation the Pro for me as an upgrade wasn't quite enough to make me want to go and upgrade but if you were to to do an all-in-one solution with with VR I would be keen you know I would oh, definitely, definitely. Like that, you know like like I work in IT right and now like I, like I can tell you from a uh, a, like a work perspective here people find it hard to press control alt delete <laughs> and you're giving people a console that's got about three wires going into it straight away just the playstation mm-hmm. 4 itself now you've got another five cables another box it's just it's just ridiculous and they really need to fix that solution a developer <laughs> i won't name that developer okay. uh, what what he's what he was saying to me and from his experience what he was saying was he got the impression that the VR team was a separate team within Sony yeah. that were told to work on VR and they did it as a completely separate <laughs> project and that's why we've now got that big stupid separate box on all the wires and then it was just like, right, it worked, let's put it with the PlayStation 4 or the PlayStation 4 Pro and there were two separate teams <laughs> and that's why it's so like so convoluted with wires and a mess. Sounds like Sega in the 90s all over again. Exactly. Oh. But if you can bring that in now and you know that it's working, that, no, that's a million PlayStation VRs they announced. They've sold a million PlayStation VRs now and obviously yeah. hopefully they are going to expand on that. But if they said, right, we know it's working, we know we're going to sell it, let's put it all now and we'll clean it all up. I'd be, I'd, like, I'd be really happy with that. I'd be peed off because I bought the bloody original one and I've got the cables, but for new <laughs> users coming, coming in, yeah. that's perfect. You come in and like I said, if you've got one unit and you've got one headset, that makes it much more accessible. And like, like you mentioned, Mike, the accessibility yeah. part of it, you know, and all this me- like nonsense. Make it accessible to people that are half-wits. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Like like me. I mean, let's be honest, I'm not the best technically the best of times, so I'm quite happy with something nice and easy. What's it calling you a half wit? No, no, I, I was calling me a half wit. So, uh, another game that's been announced and uh, it looks like it's going to be across platforms. Um, well, not all platforms. Xbox One, PS4, and PC. We have the new Need for Speed. Uh, game payback, payback. It's, it's called Ooh. and um, they're talking about this being a little bit more plot heavy than some of the previous ones so there's a bit more of a story to it which sounds um, which sounds interesting I mean the screenshots like this is the problem I have with with any car game is that you know there, there's that's how much of a general car, uh, racing fan I am is I call <laughs> it a car game but it, the, the, the issue I have with it is that the screenshots always look insanely good like they look mm. great you know a car in a, in a game looks the same as a great car in real life right so so um so i you know this looks this looks interesting though i like the fact that um there seems to be a mix of the off-road thing and the on-road thing which looks cool there's a bit of a plot to it um you've got characters in there hopefully they're developed i actually for once and this is not often i say this i might actually be keen to find out a little bit more yeah the franchise of need for speed's been a kind of a weird place because they spent like almost a decade burning that franchise like Activision tends to do then they took a break Mm -hmm. and then they came back with uh, just Need for Speed the 2015 reboot and you can tell these days they're really trying to bring it back to what people like about the franchise like with the last one really focusing on customization was that Rivals was that no No, that that was the last one before that Um, nah anyway it's looking good because they really are trying to care about their um, audience now, and they're really taking in feedback, which is good to see. He is thinking about their audience. Oh, is that Activision? 
Oh yes, it is EA. My is apologies. EA? <laughs> so is it EA is considering their 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 users? Well, I know it's <laughs> crazy. The worst company voted for about four times in a year. In oh, a row. Yeah, they really burnt that franchise out. But <laughs> ah, burnt out. Oh, yep. Yeah, well done. <laughs> Talking about E3, we need a new burnout game. It's been years since we've had one of those. Is, isn't part of this new Need for Speed, isn't it, like, people were saying it looked a little bit like Burnout. It was like crashes and stuff. That would and, interest me. Yeah, I, and that's I think, what I miss. That's what I miss about but And I think games. someone said it reminded them of, like, the Fast and Furious. Yeah, you can <laughs> tell they really have been taking focus of that, like climbing up on cars and jumping onto yeah. trucks and stuff like that. Yeah. Just need Vin Diesel's voice in there. That's it. <laughs> well, it, it looks interesting. It looks a little bit more... Um, as you say, there's a bit more of a, a backstory to this one than, than some of them, which could be good. You know, they, they could get it horribly wrong, but it could be good. Hopefully it'll be good. Um, and the screenshots look great, but then you'd expect that anyway. So I'm um, looking out for that. It, uh, it looks like it's coming on the 10th of November, so a little while to wait. But I, apparently they're going to be doing um, the, the access thing that they sometimes do where they give you some gameplay before everyone else if you've uh, got an Origin access or yeah. EA access. Ten, 10 hours, I think it was, yeah. 10 hours of gameplay they're giving you on the 2nd of November, so you'll get that a little bit before everyone else, which is cool. 10 hours is good, though, and that's a lot of hours of, mm -hmm. of gameplay. Um, moving on to E3 just briefly then, because... Um, we don't know what's going to happen, but we are at the guessing stage now. So let's just quickly, what would be your... I mean, we kind of touched on this a few weeks ago, but things have changed. We've heard some rumours now. What would be your kind of one wish or one desire from E3 2017? My one dream, and I've been wishing for, for this every single E3 since 2007, a new burnout game. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect segue, but yeah... yeah. The, Criterion hasn't done anything since then. Well, They've well, done a little bit for Star Wars. But well, let's add in two. Let's add in two. What would be your realistic wish and what would be your hyper fantasy wish? Burnout and burnout. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, God, that's a hard one. Um, I've got mines on the way. Okay, I mean. you go and I'll think. <laughs> well, what I, what I realistically want to see is I know we're not going to get Shenmue 3 visual because they're holding off, they're keeping it for later in the year. But I, like, I'm really keen on seeing what Nintendo does with the Switch. I want to see them announce the full virtual console. I want to see an Animal Crossing, a Metroid, and a Pokemon. Obviously, we may get that tomorrow. This is the three big things I want to see them just because I think they would be massive for the console. And yeah. it's good to see Nintendo back in the game competing on a, on a sales-wise level. My fantasy wish, totally fantasy, is I'd love Sega to get back into the console race. Release a Dreamcast 2 with all their games in it and some new ones. I'd be like, heaven has come from the sky and landed on my head. <laughs> that, would, that would be cool. I would go with that. Um, for me, I think, that realistically, I want to see the Switch uh, provide us with, and Nintendo provide us with some AAA titles, some real quality titles for the Switch and some interesting ones as well ones that we don't know a lot about but we're t you know they're, they're a bit of a teaser I'd like to see that That I think that's realistic and we should probably hope for that PlayStation um, Sony wise I think that I would like them as we mentioned already to have their focus solely on the games and to really try and um, and and just keep the keep the quality coming because it's it is high as it is and just keep that going and also the integration thing for sure um, as a complete fantasy thing I mean there are the usual ones like I'd like to see a new Half Life and all that kind of stuff but what I would actually really like to see is I would love them to develop Star Trek from the VR experience and create a new story in the style of a proper Mass Effect game. So I'm not saying that Andromeda is not proper Mass Effect game, but I'm talking the original Mass Effect trilogy, but Star Trek, but have it so that you can meet some of the classic characters in your travels. So I want to see Picard in there. I want to see William Shatner doing a voice, you know, I, all that stuff. I want the full experience and i know we've got the online um the, the it's free to download on the playstation and that's mm. great but i want to see it in like a proper kind of um first person perspective potentially well the vr would be massive wouldn't it like imagine like yeah. that that star trek bridge crew by the way was it like was it called bridge commander before and they changed it to bridge crew anyway yeah I uh, think so. yeah that's apparently really good when you get into it it's really really cool playing it and stuff but you kind of move around the ship yeah. and it's only got the two ships it's got the Aegis or whatever it's called and then the mm. classic one what I'd really yeah, as you said imagine if they had that in the full universe and yeah. you could go to Deep Space Nine you could go yeah. to the Enterprise and you could walk around the ships you could well, walk around the space station you had the Gemadar 
Or it's going to be amazing. Yeah. But they've also got the new the new TV series on the Discovery. way on Netflix, which I, I'm very excited about. And it's the first time I've been this excited. Probably actually in the run-up to... Um, uh, what was the one 15 years ago with uh, Scott Bakula as... Enterprise. Enterprise, right, yeah. So, mind blank. So, Enterprise. <laughs> I, I was this excited in the run-up to Enterprise. And I can remember getting a, a slightly dodgy copy of the first couple of episodes before they came out over here. Um, and I really enjoyed Enterprise. I thought it was great. But I've, I'm this excited again. So, surely this is the time where they could tie something in. The VR is great. But if it was a game that had all that and more, a real universe. Um, there's so much potential. Just, just to go off topic, like we're talking about the Star Trek thing, that, that Discovery trailer, there was two versions of it. There was one with the M83 track in it, and there was another one with, I forgot the name of the band. But I, like, I watched both of them, I've watched them about 100 times now. Yeah. Like, I don't know about you, Michael, but, but like Star Trek to me is like a big part of my life. I've watched yeah, it since too. I've been a little kid, Deep Space Nine's my favorite Star Trek ever. And that trailer came on, I thought, oh, I hope it's good. And I know it's got that Sarah Michelle Green or whatever her name is. And it's got obviously Michelle Yeoh. Is it Michelle Yeoh? That's right, isn't it? Anyway, <laughs> it's got them in it. And I thought, you know what? It looks like Netflix is taking over here in, the, in Europe and stuff. And it looks like they've actually got a really good budget. It looks like mm. a serious Star Trek. No, like yeah. a jokey one. And like, I'm being genuinely serious here. As geeky as I am, I, like, I'm even getting shivers thinking about it like, <laughs> right now. I've got shivers across my body and I almost wanted to cry. Because I was like, oh my God, finally, we've got Star Trek again, and one that looks like it's done properly. So that's I know people pro will argue about that bit. Well, they will. Of course they will. And the thing is that... The, the, the um, oh, something just happened there. I just suddenly got some somebody singing Figaro in my ears for some reason. I must have been I must have opened something by mistake. I don't know what happened there. Figaro. Very strange. Anyway, that threw me off. Anyway, hopefully it's not in the recording. No, actually, I hope it's in the recording. That would be much better. Um, so um, just a random Figaro. Yeah. Just randomly, yeah. I thought well, someone doesn't agree with me about Star Trek. So uh, for me, I think you're right, and I think that the movies. I love the movies as entertainment, you know, but they're not Star Trek to me. Like to me, mm. Star Trek is the TV series. For me, it was mm. Next Generation. That's what I grew up with um, and I think that they it looks like they might just have got this right <clears throat> and if they have it's going to be great and it's really mm -hmm. exciting and I know I'm going to binge watch them because they're going to do the Netflix thing of having them all on at the same time and then I know it's I'm going to it's just going to be a, mm. a day of watching them but it's exciting it's great it's great to see some Star Trek coming back you know so um I can't all right, wait then. to see Luna's Chewbacca. He's my favourite. Luna's Chewbacca. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Classic Star Trek wars. <laughs> all, the star, all the Star Treks. Um, so, um, before we move on to the retro corner, I um, downloaded... Um, Superman 64. Not yet. No, I'm not taking over cat litter by any <laughs> means. That's cat's job. Um, I downloaded Danganronpa, the first one on the... Oh, yeah. oh how did you find so, that? I haven't started yet. It was downloading just before we started, but uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to playing it. Um, and that was on Cat's recommendation. I've read a few reviews now, uh, or, or previews rather than reviews. I haven't spoiled it, but it looks great. So I'm looking forward to that. So that's going to be my my uh, my kind of thing this week. I've been playing mm -hmm. Rocket League a lot this week as well. For some reason, whenever I have a short amount of time, I just go back to Rocket League, and I just love it so much. I'm actually getting quite good at it now, which is like, I can't say that about many games. What have you guys been playing this week? Um, I've been jumping around mainly Zelda because that's never going away <laughs> and oh, what else uh, Trials Fusion that old game from 2004 oh, yeah. ages ago um, sorry just to go back to what we were saying about things I'd like to see at E3 I would love to see Sega bring games to Nintendo Switch kind of in an SNK way yeah. so I really just want to play Dreamcast games on Switch well, the, well the, <laughs> as a rumour there was someone who had saw something where was it again someone had posted up again it was like a survey and it was asking about some Sega service, and I can't remember the oh, name of it. Oh. And it looked like Sega's about to release, or they're going to be doing something that's like the Virtual Console or like the right. Game Pass thing, where I'll have all Sega's old games in it, and you can sign up for the membership thing. So, yeah, that could be really cool. I just want, yeah, some classic games on like the new console should go in there like they did them for the Xbox 360 mm. PS3 where it's like oh and the Mega Drive collection has got 40 yeah. Mega Drive all games them. all of them I know oh, yep okay Zega get on it <laughs> give us all the Zega games on well, all of the things this, <laughs> this all leads me really nicely today on to the retro corner and it's probably the most relevant to our conversations today it's a Sega game okay 
So it's time for the retro corner. <laughs> right. I actually had a comment this week from uh, Alistair, who listens regularly, who said that his favorite bit of the podcast, and he's listened, he, he, he was on a journey to Inverness and back, and he listened to four episodes back to back, so that was his commitment. Cool. And he, his, his, um, his request is that we keep doing the impromptu retro corner song <laughs> because it's his favorite part of the show and it, i'm sure i am sure that he sings along with us and does his little loops and blocks I hope we will do the bloop, 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 one day we can make bloop, a bloop. compilation it'll just be like one hours of the like bloop, bloop. <laughs> classics from <laughs> be like that youtube thing you know what was the one the the, the on repeat is the, is the jim carrey head when he's just like you know i don't know it's on repeat for like an hour and a half anyway so this week uh you're right it is it's it's a game for the Sega Mega Drive Genesis. Oh, we're going to so, guess this one. So I'll give you some clues and then you can tell me. So funnily enough, it's uh, it's an EA game <laughs> and it's for Sega. Road Rash. Uh, and no, uh, it's not Road Rash, although I was playing that this week, funnily enough, because oh, I got, game. <laughs> got my... Ha- it's brilliant. I, I got my hands on um, just a little handheld Mega Drive, one of the ones made by 80 Games, right. and it's got a little. I've got a little slot for uh, extra games on there, and I was playing Road Rash one and three. Funnily enough, I don't have two for some reason in the collection, but one and three, great games. But it's not that. It it came out in 1992, uh, Japan. It was released in April 93. It's a platformer. Is it? What's it? The two guys, uh, the two characters, and oh, what's the name of it again? Uh, it's, it's not what you're thinking of. I don't know if you're thinking of Toe Jam and Earl. Yeah, I was. I was thinking that because that was the EA, wasn't it? Was it? I think. I um. I think so. I think it was. But this mm. is definitely EA. E- e- is, e- e- is it Cool Spot? It's not Cool Spot, but that's another great game. Uh, um, Shadow of the Beast. So I'll give you a clue. These are all good <laughs> guesses. It stars. Um. Okay, this might give it away. The the main character is an elephant. <laughs> mm, no. This is this is like the bit, like remember the TV show catchphrase where you'd say it's right, but it's sorry, it's it's good, but it's not right. <laughs> it's good, but it's not right. Can we it's, get a um... <laughs> And it was always okay. miles off. It was always miles off. You'd say that's a great it's... guess, but it's not right. <laughs> so this game is a single player. It's pretty Everything. tough. I was playing it last night actually, and this is what reminded me um, how great a game it is. It still looks really, really good as well. Um, it's beautifully coloured. It's very, very bright. Um, the elephant is is great. And, and the whole role of the elephant, this might give it away, is to save his animal friends along the way. And each animal has a special, special ability that you need to, to get to the end of the level. So, for example, there's a rabbit early on that's able to jump very high. To get through the level, you need to rescue the rabbit, and then he can jump high to get you through it. I'm totally it. clueless in this one. Uh, I'm completely lost. There's You've a squirrel. Okay, You've so the, us. the game is Rollo to the Rescue. I've never heard of it. Never heard of it either. Okay, so Rollo to, <laughs> Rollo to the Rescue was a game that came out in 92, uh, released by EA, or Electronic Arts, and uh, it came out on the Mega Drive and Genesis in Europe and in America in 92, but Japan had to wait till April the next year. Now, it was around about the time of the James Pond series, oh, so yeah. oh, yes. there are there are similarities between Roll to the Rescue and James Pond um, too, and um, it stars Roll of the Elephant in a very colourful colorful world, and you start with a kind of Mario-style map, so a 2D map where you start at one point, once you get past that level, you go to the next part of the map, you can go there, and there's like bridges to go elsewhere to a different level and whatever. Mm. Um, and so so each each uh, level, there are animals in cages, and once you get, you have to get the key to open the cage, and once you open the cage, another animal helps you out. But to get through the level, you have to get the key and the animal first. You can't just go to the end. You can go to the end of the level, but you can't go anywhere. You can't you can't progress until you do all these things. So the rabbit is able to jump high. The squirrel can climb. There's a part one level where you need to climb. There's a mole that can dig, which you need to do, and there's the beaver that can swim. So if you jump in the water as Rolo, life lost. Now it's pretty <laughs> unforgiving. So if you if you get stuck on one of those horrible Sonic style loops where you can't get past a certain thing and you keep jumping on spiky things, tough. You're you're gonna die. 
It's not, you're not <laughs> going to last. Yeah. Um, it was awarded by Megatech, who were one of the, the kind of reviewers of the magazines at the time, 89%. So it's it's very, very, highly, very highly rated. Four out of five was kind of an average. And um, it was also voted as number 31 in the top Mega Drive games of all time. And considering how huge a library the Mega Drive has... Mm-hmm. Uh, that is pretty high. So, yeah. if you like, if you like kind of old school platform games that look great in 16-bit, then definitely check out Roll to the Rescue. Uh, it is a really, really fun game and very difficult. It sounds like a like a slow man Sonic the Hedgehog, but it also makes me think that it was the elephant from Street Fighter Two. It retired and went on a journey. <laughs> it's <laughs> and a li- awesome stage. <laughs> it's you know what it's it is, but it's also it reminds me a, a little bit of uh, what was the Master System game? The little character in the Master System. Um, he did go on to to be in the Mega Drive. Alex Kidd. Alex Kidd. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. It reminds me, maybe more of the pace of that, but. It controls really well, and that's one of the things I noticed last night. Um, some games you go back and play on the Mega Drive, and they control horribly. But this is smooth, and and not just smooth, really responsive. It does what you expect it to do, um, and it's satisfying, but very, very difficult. There's a little pr- prickly hedgehog that you don't see because he's tiny, and then if he gets underneath your feet, you're done for. So, um, you know, game over, man, game over. I mean, you know, well, who wouldn't in the real world expect that to happen if a hedgehog was to crawl under an elephant's foot? Of course, the elephant's going to drop down dead. That's just science, yeah, right? Yeah, So, so check it out. It's uh, Roll to the Rescue. Um, have a look at some of the you'll, you'll get the footage on YouTube as well and, and you can still pick up the game pretty cheap I think you can get it on eBay for a fiver ten or something like that you know what I'd love we're like, we were just joking about the Dalsum stage I'd love it <laughs> I'd love it if game companies made some games and had a little backstory hidden somewhere and had a little hint to something like that so that elephant if there was like a little hidden story somewhere and it said like he's passed that you worked in some like fight club or something <laughs> well I, I th- I'm trying to remember I s- for some reason I think there is a link to the James Pond series with this I, I, I don't really? know for sure yes there is I'm just checking it out now and there was he makes a James Pond makes a cameo in Roller to the Rescue <laughs> so is it well it's made by the same company isn't it because he was James Pond yeah, 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 yeah 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 he was James Pond so that's yeah. cool that's cool little in jokes like that little throwbacks and stuff yeah. While we're on the topic of Mega Drives, we're all resident Mega Drive fans, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. Did any of you ever get into Alex Kidd? Yeah, I've tried so many of them. I've just never got into them. Back in the day, because that was like one of the games that I think I got right at the start. One rock, Wonder paper, Boy scissors, and wasn't it? Was it rock? Ah, was yeah. It rock? Yeah. yeah, that was, rock, the, paper, that was the whole thing. Yeah, I, I wanted to love Alex Kidd so many times. Like I can remember thinking he was a cool looking character platform perfect had a little bit of an L mm-hmm. but I think I, it never quite grabbed me in the way that Sonic did and for me I kind of always had it there or thereabouts and never really ever finished it and I think that might have been the case for a few people mm-hmm. yeah I really tried like uh, the Shinobi one was good mm. but I always just felt like Alex Hitch was kind of like a by the numbers platformer mm. I don't know yeah, never was. got into yeah. it I really wish Sega and stuff like that would take some of these old franchises that they're never going to do anything with, like, realistically, Shinobi and that is never going to come back, probably. Uh, well, in fact, I think they did do a Shinobi recently, but anyway, uh, like, franchises they're never going to touch again. James Pond, for instance. I love yeah. that they've done something like that and they showed them as, like, 40 years later or 30 years later and they had, a, like, a beer gut. <laughs> <laughs> they're sitting there chain smoking. Well, <laughs> interestingly, if you're a fan of James Pond, there is a game on the iPhone um, called James Pond in the Deathly Shallows. So um, you can check that out. I've never is seen it. Is he old and smoking a bag? I don't know. I'd love that to be the case, but I, probably, <laughs> I doubt it very much. And um, they, they did attempt a Kickstarter for a, a James Pond game in 2013, unfortunately, it didn't. It didn't reach the, t- the target. It was it was cancelled before the, it's on- the, ah. the target. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but um, no, they were great games and um, very of the time. But all games that look still good now, and I think that's something that is quite impressive. 25 years on from the release for a game still to look good. So Roll to the Rescue, check it out, um, and then the James Pond series, check that out too. Um, cool. That is that is pretty much it. Is there anything else before we go that you you guys we need to add or? No, I just uh, I just want to give a sh- like a mention to some of the things for what's coming up this week. So if you're following this stuff on the Small Fry channel, 
Uh, there's the daily fix that's going up now from Monday to Friday. Uh, obviously, we've got the podcast that'll be up when you listen to this. Yeah. This weekend coming, though, we're going to have episode three of Games Lounge Series 3. That will be available this weekend right before E3 kicks in and we've got a discussion there what we're predicting for E3, me, uh, me and Cat, Chat with Cat. So definitely check that out the weekend. Definitely give us some feedback on the podcast. And yeah. uh, it'll all be on Small Fry Unify's YouTube channel and Facebook. So let us know what you think of it, guys, and give us some feedback, and give us some questions, some of your thoughts. And we'll be doing the live streams mm-hmm. in here, me, Anton, Kirk, and possibly Adam. So there'll be a few of us here in the studio, and we'll be watching the, the streams live as they happen, and we'll be hopefully hopefully interacting with some of you guys. So hopefully you join us. Cool. Awesome. Um, I've just had a message from my wife who obviously can hear what we're saying and <laughs> recording. Or no, or I should rephrase that. She can hear what I'm saying. She can't hear what on earth you guys are saying. So some of my replies might sound weird. And she says, uh, love it when Rolo collects vacuum cleaners and can suck items into his trunk, then fire them at his enemies. <laughs> That's how I'm getting it. It sounds I, amazing. I imagine so really want to try this. Sold. I think the 16-bit era of games is like the definitive era yeah. for me. And yeah. this just sounds like a 16-bit Zega version yeah. of Kirby. I'm like, that's... Oh, it that's really is. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. a great yeah. shout, actually. That's a, that's probably the closest comparison of all of them. But honestly, check it out, Anton. I'd like to hear what you think, actually. So next week, you can let me know. Yeah, definitely. Even, even if you YouTube it. Sitting there at the Sega table, uh, sorry, the EA table. We've got an idea for the game, guys. What is it? Well, it's an elephant. An elephant? What? This is like really slow compared to so Yeah, but it, but he sucks hoovers up. And if I, yeah, it's sold. I said, make it, make it now. Put the whole team in it. Yeah, but he can't. He can't survive the jab of a hedgehog, though. So you know, EA Sports. It's in the name. I know. Wait, this was probably. Yeah, no, this would have been around about the time that that came into it as well. Probably just about that time. Right, that's it for this week then. Uh, Episode 19, that is us for the teens. We are over and we're into our 20s after this week. So have a fabulous week. Enjoy um, all your gaming, whatever you may be doing. And we will be back next week for episode 20. Goodbye. See you later, guys. Bye. Bye.